morning, Peggy. Morning, Mr. Draper. I had this idea. I don't know where it came from. I don't know how it developed about doing a thing set in the 60s. I paid someone to do research because the internet was not easy to navigate at that point. The first piece of research I got in was all about the, the, the crisis in cigarette advertising in 1960. But what I really wanted to do was do a story about someone who was like me, who was 35 years old and who had everything and who was miserable. Draper, who knows anything about that guy? No one's ever lifted that rock. He could be Batman for all we know. <laughs> I wrote the pilot while I was writing on a sitcom. Yeah. I wrote it while I was on Becker. It was a couple of years before it got me the job on The Sopranos. I wrote it, it sat for two and a half, three years. I got a job on The Sopranos. I worked on The Sopranos for four years. And then I shot the pilot. And then we waited eight months for the network to pick up the show. And then I wrote the second episode. And they're like, okay, we love the pilot. What else are you gonna do? We need to know what the story is. And so I went into AMC after doing a lot of work on it and I said the story of the first season is going to be the fact that nobody knows that this man has this identity and that he looks perfect and that we're going to find out that he has this haunted past that he has another man's identity because that's what I was the, the, the pilot was always about identity. I don't know what it is you really believe in. But I do know what it feels like to be out of place. To see the whole world laid out in front of you the way other people live it. There's something about you that tells me you know it too. Don's secret identity is a construction of two things. It's about a man named Dick Whitman who is raised in very inauspicious beginnings by people who aren't his parents uh, in an abusive home, runs away to war, has an opportunity to switch identities with a man who is actually responsible for this man's death. Then that man is Don Draper. And he comes back and sort of starts to make a life for himself and as the series has gone, we've seen that, that his ideal of who that man is is what we saw when we first started watching the show. It's a guy in a suit who is very slick and very good at his job. And he has a certain amount of empathy for subjects, and it's made him a good advertising man. And throughout the seasons, we've seen him get closer and closer to being that idealized man in the suit with the house in Westchester and the beautiful wife and the two kids and the contract at the agency and some fame. But it always felt to me that he could never be front and center because he has this secret identity. How much fame could he really get? What is his ambition? I was basically hoping that on some subconscious level people would understand that this was Don's life, that what's left of his life is a phantom limb. My grandfather, um, one of my grandfathers, my dad's dad had diabetes and had lost his leg and he always used to ask me to scratch his toes on his leg that wasn't there. And I love the idea that Don's wife, his house, his kids, his whole persona was this ghostly thing that he could still feel that wasn't there anymore. Women and men who identify with Don, not because he's cool and says you to everybody and can solve every problem with his brain and women throw themselves at him, but because he is one person on the inside and another person on the outside. I think everybody identifies with that on some level. At the end of the pilot, you're gonna find out he's married. So does this person have the qualities that I will not hate them? And I don't mean like on the likability scale, I mean, am I gonna think he's ungrateful and arrogant and slick and glib? Or am I going to realize that he has a problem that's more complicated that the audience can deal with? I have ideas. I'm sure you do. Sterling Cooper has more failed artists and intellectuals than the Third Reich. I come in at the beginning of the season with an idea of what the season's for, images for the last um, episode, uh, arcs for each of the characters. I talk for like a day. Then everybody else has to come in with 10 ideas based on now that I've told them the year, the characters, they may, the writers have been working there a while, have been thinking about them all summer. The, the writer's room is a free for all of confessional environment where work is being done all the time on story. What defines story is what happened to you that day, what happened to you in your childhood, and what you've read about and what you know. As a writer, you're contributing, you're pitching ideas on the story, you're hoping to give them ideas, and then you go off and write a draft, and then you might write a second draft, and then the showrunner takes it and they rewrite you. And each episode, I like to have it be a self-contained unit, to have it try and be a movie. Again, making reference to The Sopranos, that was one of the things I loved about the show, is that an episode was uh, thematically unified, and the soap opera would be advanced, the continuing story would be advanced, but that would be itself. 
I wanted it to be the kind of thing where you could focus every week. You had no idea who the person was going to be, who was going to be in the show, except for Don, who the focus was going to be on, uh, what the theme would be about, where it would begin, where it would end, and what the story would be out about every week. And there's usually a business story and a personal story for him, and those two things are related to each other, and they have a beginning, middle, and an end. Then for each of the characters, kind of what their process is going to be for the season. It was always the intention that the scene would have the story point, it would have two opposing character points, and hopefully something bigger going on. The story has been done all together with a bunch of people, but then it's yours, and you have to add to it and look for depth and hopefully, you know, write a script that can't be or doesn't need to be rewritten that much. And also find out if the story works, because that's a lot of reasons why the drafts don't work at the beginning, is the story has to evolve. There's a term called dramatic irony. It has to do with who has information. So the audience can know something that the characters don't know. Like that someone has a gun when they walk in the room and it creates suspense. The characters can know things that other characters don't know. I find this to be the most exciting dramatic tool. This is what creates tension for me. I tried to make every episode feel like the finale. So there are events that are permanent. I wanted to basically not waste the real estate, to leave yeah. them in a place story-wise where you, if you like the show, you'll, you'll be able to sleep at night. What you call love was invented by guys like me to sell nylons. You know, I wrote the pilot before uh, I ever met anyone at AMC, and they kind of just, they had a few thoughts, but really didn't make any changes in it. But one of the things that they were worried about was that there was no confidant for him that there was no Melfi, that how are we gonna find out what was on his mind? And I basically said that that's the story. He's not talking to anybody. And as soon as the first person came up to me and it was after the table read and said, that is my dad. I go, what do you mean? And they go, he's just, who knows what he's thinking? And I'm like, well, you're seeing what he's doing and you're knowing what he's thinking, but Don's even said it in the show that he's part of a generation that was raised, he's from the Midwest, that it's not polite to talk about yourself. And I think the whole mystery, the whole familiarity of that character has to do with the fact that he doesn't talk. And the idea that he would start, someone like Don would start making actual friendships. Right. Starting with Roger. Right. That he had had them in his youth and sort of had to close them up when he tra changed his identity. But the other thing that happened is I realized that contrary to the rules in cinema, and I'll include television with that, of filmmaking, you could tell a story about what was on someone's mind if you really, really tried hard and thought like silent movie-wise about how to illuminate a, an internal experience. Brilliant. I'll tell you what brilliance in advertising is, 99 cents. Somebody thought of that, Campbell. A lot of the show is about creativity and about how to solve creative problems and about how they, they don't leave you and about how your life is usually the thing that solves the problems. I have very little interest in advertising, but I'm interested in it as a method to tell a story about what's going on in his life. And we don't know it yet, but Don writes I Love Smoking on there because he is a person who does his own research and he uses his gut and his interactions with people rather than scientific studies. You're born alone and you die alone and this world just drops a bunch of rules on top of you to make you forget those facts, but I never forget. I wanted to remove the abstraction of the period. I wanted people to hear a conversation that they could relate to right now, which is, what am I doing with my life? What is my expectation for the future? The, the, the whole show, especially the pilot, was based on two questions. And they eventually get asked out loud as we go, went through the first season. Is this it? Is this all there is? And what's wrong with me? The great thing about advertising is it's a suggestion that no one has this problem but you. I see sometimes, you know, people talk about, well, it's, they think something's obvious on it or whatever else it is. There, there is there, it's working on a couple of different levels. Hopefully there's a level in there that will hit you and you will have some moment of aha and some feeling that you can't put into words. And that's, that's always what I'm shooting for. And, you know, I, I fought for that. I wanted it to sort of be on a human scale. The truth is people may see things differently, but they don't really want to. We all have secrets, and certainly a lot of the drama comes from the fact that there's a public Don and a private Don. And to me, it was, you know, Cooper knows about him, Pete knows about him, now his daughter knows about him in many ways, Betty knows about him. What, what is keeping him from 
having the self-esteem that matches the outside. And we sort of got him through alcohol and, and a series of disasters to a place where he had to tell it, and the, the, the middle of the pitch was the place to do it. The, the idea was that Don would give a, you know, a really good pitch right beforehand with the word love in it and the, the, the schmaltzy Hershey thing that actually became sort of their real campaign. But I love this idea that he had this personal association with it and that he would air this dirty laundry and it would be a, a moment of purity for him, which of course invites, you know, complete disaster. I don't think I realized this till the end of the show that Don likes strangers. Don likes winning strangers over. He likes seducing strangers, right. and that is what advertising is. I'm writing a story about what I think is the American identity in some way. What better than a guy who invents images of how you should behave, a guy who's presenting an ideal. There's a great book about advertising called The Mirror Makers. They're holding up a mirror. If you can find the right mirror, you can find out what it is people don't like about themselves or what it is that they want to improve or what they aspire to be. And I always felt that Don was interested in the aspiration. Don was not a fear peddler. Don was not uh, an insecurity salesman. What a better vehicle to explain identity than a guy who, like many of the, the great people in the 20th century, had a completely made up background and then sold us what the ideal was supposed to be. You can't be a man. Don't even try. Be a woman. It's powerful business when done correctly. There is a difference between the lives of men and women. There is not a difference in writing a character. I'm incredibly irritated by the suggestion that you have to be the thing you're writing about. It's as insulting as that you only want to watch the thing you are. I just think it's annoying that, that there is extra virtue given to the gender of the author. I only call because I realized I never said goodbye to you. When people tell me that they like the finale and that it's this incredible moment, they are discounting the fact that they went through hell, literally, to get to that moment of connection between Sally and Don. That you started off with a guy on a beach, talking to this soldier who's gonna die, and reading the Inferno, and saying, I don't wanna do this anymore, I want to change. And you just see him get in worse, and deeper, and deeper, and deeper, and indulge all of the worst parts of his personality, and come out on the other side with some kind of cleanliness. I don't say he went to paradise, but he definitely moved on from hell. Part of the story of the show is who are the people who created this country? Who are these giants? And they have more stories like Don's than they do about having their hair tousled by their father. Sure, there's an image that we convey of like, you know, family happiness, and but the drive behind the men and women who end up in Don's position and are much higher, you know, presidents, heads of corporations, whatever, they have stories like this. and. And it sort of gets whitewashed when it comes time to sell stuff. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you're an aspiring screenwriter, I have something really cool for you. So my friend Tyler Mowry has created a Facebook group specifically for screenwriters. In this group, we brainstorm ideas, we give and receive feedback, and we learn about the writing process together. It's extremely beneficial and it's completely free. So I highly recommend that you join it. I'm a moderator over there, so I will see you there. As always, if you have a film or TV show that you'd like me to make a video on, just comment it down below. I'll see you guys next week as we take another look behind the curtain.